have never legally binded myself to such amount of money in my life. So you have every right to question everything in that contract. Welcome back to my channel my name is Belinda if you're new here make sure to hit the subscribe button if you're a returning subscriber welcome back welcome to the farm um, so today's video is an addition to the home buying series I'm sure you've checked out my last video if you haven't I'll make sure to put a link um, on the right or the left side you'll see a link somewhere on the screen make sure to click on that um, get to see me sharing the news that I bought a house <laughs> I'm super excited and just as I mentioned in that video this videos were shot a while back it's actually March 2022 at this point um, so if you see me wearing the same top it's because I shot this videos back to back you know how we do in this channel we keep it real raw and honest um, so today's video I'll just be walking you through my home buying journey the process it takes to actually buy a house in my case I bought a new build so my process will be specific to a new build if you're purchasing a new build in the UK um, majority of the steps are quite similar to a normal buying a normal house but just wanted to add that caveat in in case your process ends up being slightly different because you're buying uh, a house that's old build it's not old I mean you're buying a house that's already there so yeah I'll walk you through the process it's something that I found quite difficult to follow um, when I was buying a house for the first time because I, was a first, I, I am a first time buyer so I'll try break it down as simply as possible the way I would have preferred if I was watching other people's videos because I did watch people's videos and I was like what what then what happens next what happens so I'll try keep it nice and short um, concise short and sweet for you um just in case you're interested in buying a house you get to know at least in layman's terms what the typical steps involve so the first thing that you usually do if you want to buy a house is to get financially assessed you do not need to go and see any houses there it's a waste of time for you to go and view houses if you don't you don't know what your affordability is so what you need to do you need to book an appointment with a mortgage advisor um, they get details on what you earn any outgoings, any loans that you have, any credit cards, any outgoings that you have, not, not rent, they don't count things such as rent, they count things that will still be outgoings even after you move into your new house. Those are the type of costs that they look at and they'll basically let you know what your affordability is. So you start off by getting financially assessed, then what normally happens, you will get an agreement in principle, or what people call sometimes a mortgage in principle. And with this, then you're good to go to start viewing houses or to go to developments. Like in my case, I went to a development, different developments um, to see the developers and what um, houses they had on offer on their plan and get to view the houses. Then the next step, so an agreement in principle, and I've just mentioned it, but it may be something that it's new to you. An agreement in principle is literally just an indication of what a financial lender is willing to give you if you apply for a mortgage. So it's usually a soft start. It doesn't affect your um, credit score at all. Um, therefore, it's just important that you give true reflection of your current financial position to your mortgage advisor so that your agreement in principle is as accurate as possible. You'd only be lying to yourself if you in, uh, or, or just exaggerated your incoming and failed to mention your outgoings because the time will come when you'll apply for your mortgage application and everything on your file your lender will be able to see. So you genuinely want to know, can I actually afford this house? So just be honest with your mortgage advisor. They are there for you. They actually, your, your interests are aligned because they want to get your mortgage. They get commission on your mortgage. So it is only in both your best interest if you do give a true reflection of your position, then that way you know your true affordability. So once you have your agreement in principle, you're ready to go. Um, I use websites such as Rightmove because initially I didn't know I wanted to get a new build. I was open to existing houses as well. So I, I went on Rightmove, Zoopla to check out what's on the market, went for viewings. A lot of this um, 
real estate agents won't take you seriously if you don't have an agreement in principle so a lot of them first question they ask you do you have an agreement in principle what's your affordability you don't want to waste their time showing your house that you can't afford so i i guys viewings are so stressful especially if you're working literally after five fasting for a period of like two months i was every time after work heading off for a viewing because a lot of this real estate agents work also nine to five or nine to five thirty so i only really had a small window after work to go and view these houses at that point is when i decided because i would go view a house today tomorrow it's already gone for some reason it was a hot hot market during the covid period because this was around october last year when i was doing this process and it reached a point i was just like i need i'm just gonna choose a new build so that's when my journey changed a little bit because if you're going for an existing house your journey at this point might be different so for a new build um what happens is you go you view the show homes they show you what's on plan what's part of the next phase and then you select your house at this point i paid 500 pounds to reserve a house so i had my reservation appointment and i remember this was on 22nd of october last year that i made the big 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 girl decision to reserve a house and guys for some reason you feel like you're signing your life away and it's not even a legally binding contract at that point you're just putting down some money 500 pounds to say that i am interested i'd like to reserve this plot do not sell this plot to somebody else and that reservation is only for a short period of time for me it was 28 days though uh, we only exchanged contracts last month so clearly and last month was february <laughs> So it's not really 28 days but on the paper it does say we'll reserve this plot for you for 28 days go away sort yourself out in 28 days you should be in a position to exchange contracts all right so if it is a normal house at this point i suppose you put an offer in and the buyer this the seller says do they want to accept it or not and that's where you probably do a bit of negotiation on the price because for an existing house there is the, the house price is not set on stone you can negotiate However, with a new build, majority of the time you can't really negotiate the house selling price because it's 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 how they're selling. They're selling like 400 houses. They're not going to make a compromise for you as such unless there's something you can really tag on. Maybe something is not to the right quality. And even at that point, you can't even view the house. The house will be built in a couple of months time. All right. So I reserved for 500 and that's because I was a first time buyer. I think if you're not a first time buyer, you'll actually have to pay more. So there's certain um, incentives that they have in the UK for first time buyers. And I also chose at this point to use the help to buy scheme. Before I could reserve, they needed me to have appointed a solicitor. So guys, there's so many steps in between. Sorry if you're getting confused at this point. But basically, at this point, we have summarized that you get financially assessed, you get an agreement in principle, know your affordability through this agreement in principle and you use it to identify the existing house or the new build development that you want to go and place your offer in. When it's a new build, you do not place an offer. Instead, you arrange a reservation appointment. And by the time you go for this reservation appointment, you need to have appointed a solicitor. Now, most developments, they want you to use their solicitor. So they have couple of solicitors they work with and this is because the developer will get a commission from that lawyer for referring you to them so they're getting clients through the developer because you can imagine every marketing office everyone who wants to reserve will probably need a solicitor not will probably they will need a solicitor at the point of reserving I urge you not to go with the lawyer or the solicitor that has been suggested by the development Remember, your solicitor should be fully independent of the developer. They should be looking out for you. And I cannot prove it on paper, but I do not trust someone who clearly is getting a lot of business from the developer. Are they likely to ruffle any feathers when they know they're getting a very, very steady stream of income from this developer? I don't think so. So I intentionally did not go with any of the solicitors that were being suggested by my developer. I went online, there is a review solicitors, um, review lawyer, actually it's a review solicitor website, uh, a comparison website that I found online and I checked for the most highly rated solicitors in Birmingham because I'm based in the Midlands and that's how I selected my lawyer. So most lawyers, 
all they need is for you to put a down payment and they're happy to represent you going forward they only need the full payment to at the end when the completion has taken place so i appointed my lawyer i attended my reservation appointment they walk you through the plans the house plans how it's going to be the common areas any fees so like for me it was a, a, a freehold but however you still need to pay an annual um, management fee just for any of the the people who cut the grass clean the road or whatever commute the communal areas have to be maintained so there's a fee for that so they let you know of things that won't surprise you certainly don't surprise you in the contract you're like what you didn't tell me this so they walk you through a lot it was like a three hour appointment guys it reached a point i'm just looking at plans i'm like can we be done with this it's not like i even know what i'm looking at but that's what happens in a reservation appointment and then you sign your life away jokes you don't sign your life away there's nothing legally binding at this point until you exchange contracts you can pull out and get your full 500 pounds back so i did state that i want to make use of the help to buy scheme um i will talk in more detail and a whole other video about the help to buy scheme um, but i did state that i would like to use the help to buy scheme so after that um i also you know you have to have a mortgage advisor right so i did make use of the mortgage advisor from the developer um just because it was much easier and they have direct they're able to feed in the information about my mortgage progress um to the to the developers directly i don't have to be the middleman for that the thing that i intentionally did not use from the developer is the solicitor i mean i need my views represented by an independent person that's just me my preference all right so the next steps after this um it, basically i had uh, another appointment to the mortgage advisor um they now have to make the application for you they'll ask for a lot of documentation from you um but guys you will be so surprised at how quick a mortgage offer comes out like i don't know I, I always feared this mortgage application process but as long as you answer every question truthfully you provide the documents needed by the mortgage advisor guys i had my mortgage offer in less than a week i mean because what they do is they make the application on your behalf the mortgage advisor makes the application on your behalf and sends out the documents on your behalf does whatever checks I don't know what they do they they probably review the documents then tell the bank I don't know what relationship they have with the bank but they do the application on your behalf and um, the bank will send out I remember I had to pay 200 pounds for the bank to send out a valuer to the property remember this father doesn't make sense the property has not been built it's a plot of land but this did send a value I paid 200 pounds for a guy to go and look at mud but anyway the guy went <laughs> valued whatever and said yeah it's worth the purchase price and i got my offer so my offer was actually from halifax remember this is not sponsored just telling you that my my current um, so we decided to go with halifax main reason being that um the offer they could give me an offer that reaches september they had first of all a good interest rate the interest rate didn't stand out from the others like it was in line um and then also your offer your mortgage offer needs to reach the point of completion so remember i reserved in october my house is meant to be finished in june july 2022 that's over that's around nine months from the time of reserving to the point of completion and your mortgage offer needs to be valid till the time when the keys will be handed over to you so not many banks give a mortgage offer that lasts more than six months so that's a specific reason that we went with halifax but the interest rate was also good all right so you get your mortgage offer next thing um also i had to apply for my help to buy get approved there's that initial um, authority to not authority to exchange authority to i can't remember proceed yes <laughs> authority to proceed so mortgage advisor still applied that for me so a lot of these things it's your mortgage advisor who does them then your solicitor on the other hand is waiting for some documentation from the developer for them to do their searches, their search on the plot to see is there any mining searches, mining things to be aware of. Um, basically, they just do a search on the plot of land to make sure that it's good to go. But they can only do this when they, once they receive details from the developer. So this took a long, remember I, I reserved in October and I only exchanged in February. That shows you how long things can take. 
also for me i couldn't exchange before the six month window um because if you're using help to buy you can only exchange contracts within six months of completion so if they were targeting to finish my house in june july the earliest i could exchange contracts is january i can't exchange before that you can't use help to buy and exchange before that that's just what the law says so yeah so for me um i got my mortgage offer in november like first week of november or something like literally i reserved today in a week's time i had my mortgage offer that's how smooth things went i had my help to buy the only thing that was pending was now exchanging contracts so my solicitor went away did their searches and around january is when they sent me a whole like in the post if you see the mail you get from your solicitor guys if you read for high school that is a kind of it was a lot because they sent me so many documents to sign and they also sent me you know like an explanation of it so the results of the search what what so by the time you're getting that from the solicitor it means they're ready to exchange so the developer has sent whatever the developer solicitor has sent whatever contract documentation to my lawyer my lawyer has done searches my lawyer has also gone through the contract and highlighted anything i should be aware of and things that you know basically advising me on what i'm signing because the main point of a solicitor is to interpret that long contract that no one wants to read so i did get it in the post me being the auditor that i am i went through that thing with a fine tooth comb sent that lady like a two-page email asking what does clothes this mean what does this and guys make use of that money you're paying that lawyer if there is something you do not understand in that contract highlight it there's no one rushing you to exchange that contract you're going to sign do you know this the most expensive contract probably form of my life like i have never legally binded myself to such amount of money in my life so you have every right to question everything in that contract and sometimes it's not even to challenge it it's more to understand what i what am i going to be liable for right and you have every right so i think we took around two weeks of me going back and forth to the lawyer just to understand what am i signing what is this what is that um and yeah we exchange contracts now for most people the period between exchanging contracts and you getting your keys which is basically keys <laughs> which is basically completion is usually a short period but if you're buying a new build depending on the stage your house is at you have to wait so for me i exchanged contracts last month and now there's nothing really to do until june july when i get the notice of completion where the builder the, the developer basically sends my lawyer a letter saying we are now in a position this house should be finished in the next 10 days you need to now reach out to the bank to release the money from the mortgage the developer is paid etc so completion just basically means any other money that is owed is exchanged and you get your keys right so that tends to happen might happen even at the same time as exchanging contracts for if you're buying an existing house but in my case it's going to be till june july so i exchanged contracts last month signed my life away um and since then all that i've done is i did get an appointment with my developer to choose options so what this means this is only for new builds this just means um, my house has now been built to a point where now I can put certain customizations. So before they put the roof on, they do call you in for an appointment. You get to choose tiles. I'll actually put maybe as a next video or after this, I'll, I'll decide when I'm editing this video. But basically, um, you choose tiles. You choose um, if you want what type of kitchen layout that you want. Do you want flooring? Do you want extra sockets? Things like that other things that um i got to choose in my options appointment and i'll discuss that in more detail actually i've decided it will be in another video i will put up a video discussing in detail what happened during my options appointment but yeah guys that's the process in a nutshell i know that wasn't a nutshell that was long but the process is long but you will realize how simple the process is once you're in it before you start it just sounds like a whole load of new stuff but it's very simple are you ready to buy the house question confirm that you can all right go view the house decide you want to go for it either put an offer in for an existing one or if it's new reserve it then apply mortgage 
solicitor does searches and then you're in a position now to I mean of course you, the contract is received solicitor walks you through it you sign your life away and that is it you exchange contracts something I forgot to highlight before exchanging contract for you to exchange contracts deposit has to be exchanged so you'll have to send your deposit to your solicitor then the solicitor sends the deposit to the buyers the seller's solicitor yeah and depending what, what the deposit is normally it's around 10 percent of the purchase price but depending on whatever scheme you are using like i'm using help to buy so i only needed to put five percent down but even i was using the lisa lifetime isa so it is not exchanged at that point they're different basically the amount exchanged during contract of ex uh, the, the exchange of contracts depends on what the solicitors agree so it can be different in your case different in mine for different uh, circumstances but in the end you'll have to put a deposit down yeah so um hopefully that was useful if there is anything you'd like me to explain further make sure to mention in the comment section and i'll probably do a house buying q a let me know by the way do you want me to do a q a you get to ask me questions right there and then and there and i answer them to the best of my ability i'm open to it yeah and see you on the next one cheers bye